What do you know about this? YouTube, don't ding me, man. I'm just trying to entertain. I got some thumbnail. Bring it back to the old days, the old ways, man. I think the over edited trends tend to take away uniqueness, right? What makes us unique is by definition just being yourself because you can't like act that good. And so you can't act and pretend to be somebody else. But that's what trends and social media have morphed these people into. And then the youth, the youth wants to be rich and ride a Lamborghini and be naked on a Ferrari with hot chicks in Ibiza. So then they are going to follow that trend and start to ignore who they are. Right? And I hate that. Um, I just don't think it's good for internet culture. I don't think it's good for real culture. Just a bunch of replicas, man. Star Wars, Clone Wars is going to turn around and everyone's just going to be the same. Um, one thing I have done and will continue to do is just be me. I've said it a couple times, but I'm not good at a lot of things, but I'm pretty good at being me. And so the more I can talk and share with you guys, which leads me to, I think, the I think at the core what this vlog will hopefully be. Um, I was a little scared about it, and I still am. I don't know what the word is. Tiptoeing my way through it. Basically, I absorb and try to learn from a lot of different like real estate business marketing folks on the internet. But a lot of their messages are mixed messages, different messages. And then a lot of them don't talk about what they did like 10 years ago. They talk about like what they do now to build make money and that's kind of an issue I found with lifting back in the day is a lot of like the top guys are like well I do this now I'm like well you're on shit tons of drugs and you're already the best in the world what did you do 10 years ago so how can I actually learn right like how did you what are the steps there they're like showing us this elevated platform that they're standing on but they won't show me the steps to get there literal physical elevator steps you know the, the goal of having a mentor is that they had to build those wooden steps hand by hand but maybe if they help us, we could build an escalator or an elevator and get there quicker and more efficient. I never talked my own business on here that much because I hate, I think I kind of was raised a little bit old school where I think it's weird in a way to talk finances. Um, and then two, a big part of me is like self-conscious about it. You know, I, I've done this internet thing for 12 years. Um, I've done fitness for 15 plus as a career. I opened my first personal training gym in 2009. We're now about to be in 2025, um, and I'm not as successful as some of my peers. I've had some really, really good years, um, both mentally, physically, and financially, and I've had some really, really bad years, um, and the truth is um, we're in the bad ones now, and I think a lot of people don't talk about that or have the energy to vlog it because it doesn't feel good, and it's so draining. Um, but that is the, the truth. And I've thought if I'm going to come back to the internet full time, that I got to do it um, based on truth. And so I'm not starving. I'm not dying. I'm very healthy. I have a lot of things to be grateful for. I began journaling recently. So I journal a lot of things I'm grateful for. But um, beyond my journaling, I think it'll be healthy for me and hopefully healthy for y'all. Um, to stop this comparison game and see that other people don't just drive Ferraris and piss 24K carat gold. When these things are hard and financially hard, I think there's moments, and you see them in movies sometimes, that are like life-changing moments that you feel like, fuck, man. And whether you're hitting rock bottom, you know, midway, or just, just things happen, um, and they're like, I know it would be a chapter if I was to ever write a book. Like, this is on one level like superficial but to me it like hits and so the big thing was a month or two ago my car broke down in Vegas um, and uh, I just can't afford to fix it I just straight up can't afford to fix it so I had to sell it and I had to sell it for you know thousands of less of what it's worth because I couldn't fix it I couldn't afford it um, I could have taken out another credit card and all that but 
I'm currently trying to like clean up my entire finances to hopefully win in the next five, 10 years. So I'm in the middle of that bullshit. All these people preach about, but it feels lonely. Brand new me. One of my favorite shirts we ever made. Kind of this washed raspberry. I don't know if you guys caught that. It's a while ago. But that's kind of where we're headed with the rebrand. Started thinking, you know, like what items do I like the most from what we've made? This cap too. I love it. Not always what sold best, but what I enjoyed. Because I think often in business, you get a little too creative, or I do. So I got a little too creative with where I was heading. And a lot of that creativity was stemmed on random inspirations or what I thought y'all would like or people, but I think the best compliment to me, which I've received a lot, is like that they like my style or where do I shop? So I need to just kind of make for me and then hopefully you all fuck with it. I'm running a couple errands, I'm gonna go to the little mailbox on the way out. It's about 11.30 now. I'm gonna head into the gym, grab some caffeine, see what the team's doing. Step one for a productive day, caffeine. We're in the back office. Caffeine and un protein bar. I haven't eaten all day. I go, uh, it's probably now 11.45. 11.45. I uh, tend to, you guys ready for a secret? Here's a secret. Oh no, oh no. You can't see it that fast. That was samples for the fall. Um, Chet, ghost, and then a protein bar. I don't really uh, eat, eat until after I train. So I'll go protein bar, caffeine for the meeting, get revved up, all kinds of revved up. To run a contest for a sponsored member. Um, and so I don't know if that would be by merit, you know, like how strong they are or if they've gone to nationals or top five in nationals or something, but we'd have basically people send in some kind of resume video. We can make it fun, we can make it goofy or whatever. Um, bodybuilder going pro, YouTuber trying to share their weight loss journey, you know, whatever yeah. category they fit in. I got a confession. What'd you do? DoorDash okay. put Cinemark on there. Cinemark? Bruh. Popcorn, get a popcorn. <laughs> so we might have had some popcorn, you know. Avi's leaving, so we had some pizza. So I'm a little fluffy today, but it should be good carbs. But I'm probably like 205, and I was down to 196, so that's a little disappointing, but. We just got so much else going on with the rebrand and my travel, so I'm trying to figure it all out. I've been trying to tag in and train with a member every day, but it looks like they're all squatting. So it might just be solo dolo. What do you want, dude? You want to be in the vlog? I know it depends. Too late. Oh, y'all, yeah, y'all be throwing, square? you're throwing up, oh, my fingers don't do all that. My fingers don't do that, dog. <laughs> hey. Hey. That's what you do. You better get rolled up on. I don't. I did this. I did this. <laughs> Popcorn power. He was a rookie. I'm a vet. You think the average, the average gym goer 
is more likely to talk to a hot chick? I don't know. The uh, the sex conversation's tough because uh, uh, less less people in our generation in general are having sex, and you don't know. But you don't know if it's. Uh, yeah, I think it is, because a lot of people are like scared. They're more introverted, or they or they're looking for like hubby. They're like waiting for marriage. I mean, we'd be having loads of sex. I just, yeah, just have sex day and night. Sex, 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 sex. Sometimes I have it not by choice. Okay. It's against your choice. It's against your choice. <laughs> Lots of sex. See, 40 year old virgin, he talks like that's like that Randy goes on. He said, I've been having so much sex, I'm tired. Like sandbags. Yeah, I love touching boobs. You don't love boobs? They feel like sandbags. You know, when you like you grab a woman's breast and it's and you you feel it and it feels like a bag of sand when you're touching it. Bag of sand. It feels uh weird because I had a like a sad heart to heart on the vlog. And then like Sebas is filming this, but he's gonna go edit that vlog. It's like there's secrets out that you're going to find out later, but you don't know the secrets. But they know the secrets, but you don't know the yeah, secrets. That's how it feels. Back in the day. Feel a little vulnerable? Very, very, almost cried. Just for the people. Not really, but I was sad. Uh, on MTV, the, not the first, but one of the first shows was The Real World. Shout out my boy Kenny Santucci, who was on it. It was like one of the first big reality shows. And the premise was they took like some 20 year olds from all different walks of life and threw them in a house together. Oh no, that was, no, that was the real world. And they threw them in a house together, like four dudes, four chicks. And then that's the show. And they just had cameras everywhere in there. And like halfway through different seasons, they would do different things. Like they chose a cool city. So it was like real world, Seattle, real world, Austin, Texas, or whatever. And in the show, they would have a, conf or in the house, they had a confession booth. They would have like a walk-in closet or like one of the bedrooms set up with a couch and a camera like that. And they would just go in there and talk openly that no one would ever hear, but it would be on the show later. So they'd go in there and talk about fucking, you know, Stephanie or whatever and fucking. So that's how these vlogs feel now. It's like half of it's all by myself. I was just talking on the couch and then half of it's here. So they'll hear the secrets and then you'll hear the secrets. And then the world will know my secrets. That's the change my diapy. That's the change my diapy dismount. You know the question of the year right now? I'll put it for you and Subas. We're right by the river and we got rattlers. He gets bit in the cakes by a rattler. Are you sucking it? To save him? He's yeah, dead. You're sucking his cheeks. He can't say it. He can't say it without smiling. I'm just a happy person. Alright, so a really tall rattler gets up to his cakes, which is like the fifth floor. Are you sucking his cakes? I hope. <laughs> I hope that's the case. I hope you're not a cheek sucking whore. Just chucking. Yeah, yeah, it's a mosquito bite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude got a bruise. <laughs> this looks crazy. <laughs> I'm looking crazy in here. I'll never clean a bar in my life. <laughs> I ain't never cleaning them bars like that. Let that, let that bitch stay dirty. <laughs> I think taking a more minimalistic approach for us is one, cause that's like what we like. And then two, it makes pieces more versatile. But then three, it allows like our stuff, like the apparel and garment itself to talk. Where like other companies, I mean, it's no secret, like 90, 95% of apparel brands on the internet, maybe higher percentage for fitness, 
uh, just print on blanks. They all print on the same T. So their graphics and stuff, like how they tell the story, have to sell the item. And obviously we want to get better at that ourselves. But I think like having the quality that we do and the cool pieces that we do, like I, I was wearing the fleece this morning and showed it, like that in itself is like so unique and cool. Like we don't just buy like the same socks everyone does to like put it on there. You like, like our socks are straight from like a factory that makes like New Balance socks and shit. Like it's, it's like the highest quality sock itself. So I think, yeah, it's a way to let those, the garments itself speak a little bit louder. And then people just have to try it to like know, which sucks, but that's e -com, right? Like it will be hard for us to get into like a thousand Macy's, <laughs> you know? And then like that game's just dying. Down and back, we'll go to the Mustang. We'll do 10 cows. What do we do here? 10 jumps? That's good enough. All right, let's party. Hey, 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 hey. So for me, you know, it's, which I think I'm decent at, just following through on your word and just showing up. And you can't do it every other day. You can't do it when you feel like it. We're not going on feelings. We're just going on what's gotta be done. And this cardio ought to be done. So we're gonna try to keep this consistent. Now that the weather's nice, maybe Monday, Thursday. The other days I'll walk or do, do something chill. Time to eat. Just banged out some emails up to my cardio. It's just covering the breathing. Let's go home. Back home. I didn't vlog a lot in my house. Also, in the past, um, one, because I'm a little scared of doxing. Obviously, I got windows everywhere, and I don't want people to get weird, because I've had that happen. Um, not necessarily to me, but a lot of friends in my world, and internet folk. Two, uh, my house is dirty. I was embarrassed. You know, I'm not uh, a billionaire. I'm a regular ass dude figuring out. I'm actually like dead middle what it's like to be an entrepreneur. Holy shit. You know, so not to continue my therapy session here. This vlog's turned into more of a therapy than a uh, day in the life, but I would feel embarrassed that my house isn't pristine and I ain't got fucking fruit punch coming out of my water fountains. I'm gonna put this back on. You know, that it was just like a normal house. I have a very nice house. I'm very grateful. But through all these things, I'm starting to, I've done therapy my whole life. I've been on the internet. and been very vocal of my mental health issues. Um, side tangent on that is that I'll open up, I'll be vulnerable, and I'll express, you know, the diagnoses, the, the uh, ADHD I have, the depression I have, the, you know, general anxiety disorders I have, the OCD orders I have, and all this shit. And you get really good feedback from it. People like vulnerability on the internet. So when you get positive feedback, as a creator, you get more views, you get more likes. Just as a natural human... Now you want to share that more, right? Not only, and that's just the repeat, right? You, you do one shirtless selfie, everyone likes it. You start posting more shirtless selfies because that's what's getting these likes, right? And I never want to get caught up with being a vlogger or a podcaster that just bitches about my issues in my life over and over and over. I hate that. It tends to come off as virtue signaling to me, right? Yeah, there, there, is, there is a beauty in sharing, like I am today. There's a beauty in sharing and uh, I need a tripod. And connecting with each other, knowing that you're not alone through these struggles. And that is a goal of my vlog. But it doesn't always have to be about woe is me. 
Long story short, I've read all those books. How to not stop giving a shit and whatever. I've done all those audiobooks. And I do like them. Don't get me wrong. Um, and the common trend with all these cold plunges, I'm cooking by the way, lunchtime, three, four o'clock. I had to go get a key. This is all coming around. Just rant with me. Just kick it with me. Kids will say I'm yapping, but sometimes there's value in some yapping. Well, what happened is I used to get absolutely triggered by everything. And uh, there is some emotional stuff that comes with ADHD. And people talk about it. That like something bad would happen, but it's very pretty minuscule. And it would hit me and it would feel like my blood got drained from my body. And my entire life is just so negative. You get ruminating thoughts, right? The thoughts that repeat themselves in your head. That's not you. It's your programming. It's just going nuts. And I had that times a thousand. And I still do. But what the cold plunge folks like to think, and I'm not sure where I sit on this, is that they like to think doing hard things or forcing yourself to do hard things makes situations in life that are hard easier. You guys are in the fridge, dude. Is this the view? I'm becoming a vlogger. Um, and I don't know if I agree with that because when you choose something difficult, the visceral... primal feeling to like not do it and to escape and to figure it out isn't the same when it when it's chosen you insane financial or extreme financial situations death of a loved one really big problems when they choose you often it's like a nut up or shut up when you choose something difficult like a cold plunge which is difficult and sucks that just kind of sucks. It's just not the same. But either way, the point is, for me, the big things started to feel the same as the little things, which I don't think is good in the, in the scope here, right? Holy shit, I need a tripod. Long story short, running a business is very difficult. Running a successful business even more difficult. Keeping the business afloat, very difficult. Um, little things always happen. Maybe it's my life, and I'm just like, not good at upkeep or maybe it's just everyone's life and they just handle it in silence better but like little like this morning i was trying to leave and i ride my bike right because i don't have a car and uh we'll talk more about the car later in the next vlog um stay tuned i love cars but um so i leave through the garage on my bicycle my garage door opener stopped working so like, Fuck. Um, and i don't know if it's a battery or what it's blinking so it has a battery but it's just not working for me whatever end of the day Back in the day, like even two years ago, that would freak me the fuck out. I'd be so negative. But today, and I would procrastinate on fixing that issue. Although minor, I'd procrastinate on it. Um, today, I just went and got a new front key made because I didn't have a front key to my own house. Right? That's just like a mini example of, I guess, growth. I guess I'm patting myself on the back. But it's to say that I don't think cold plunge, it's so power lifted, I've lifted weights for so long. I don't think choosing your difficult is the same. I think that growth for me came from learning and reading and then also just running business that was so frustrating and so difficult and so like in my control but out of my control at the same time. I think that's what actually um, taught me to kind of let go of these things. And so having my stupid garage door opener explode on me this morning in the middle of I'm rushing out of a meeting while I'm trying to vlog would ruin my day and it did long story short I just got a key made now we're cooking every day basically some kind of green this is about a pound 12 ounces <coughs> 12 ounces of this bad boy Four minutes, fat-free cheese, a couple slices, and then 96% uh, ground beef. That's it. Put it in a bowl, stir it up. Don't worry, all the vlogs aren't going to be about me bitching. But I just got to catch up, y'all, on how my mind's going. And I do want to be vulnerable, and I want you guys to see, again, this is why I'm starting, because every other real estate guy, every other business mogul, gym owner, they're all billionaires, and they're pulling up to their gym in a Lamborghini telling you about how they did shit. But none of them... I guess there's no vlogs of people, and I don't want to say I'm at my rock bottom, 
because I, I see some light. But there, I've missed meals over the last year. I've missed grocery stores based on financial situations. I've been, um, I don't know if I've been broker than I have over these last four years. Um, I own my house. I own the gym. So, like, my net worth and my assets are okay. Like, I'm not going homeless. I have friends that take care of me, et cetera. But, um, you know, worse could push comes to shove. But I, I, on day-to-day -day cash flow, I've never been broke. I've been playing the long game for four years, really focused in on it. Um, real estate, the gym, the apparel, growing those things to hopefully be fruitful for later. Um, yeah, I'm going to finish cooking this, eat it up. The rest of the day is normally normal, man. I do finish my days around 2 or 3. I eat. I'll do a little apparel work tonight on the phone. You know, mostly it's just communicating with designers and manufacturers. I do that via my phone. Sometimes my computer in the mornings. My phone's just easier. Um, but that's a day in the life. I know we're going to work on my car soon, so stay tuned to that. E30's got to run. I'll talk about my old car, which I never flexed. You know, sometimes I get in my own way. Like, I did have a regular car. I posted the E30 here. We, we did some work on it, and then back in the day I drove it around. But I had a real car. I bought a big body Beamer, and that's the one that exploded on me and kind of put the nail in the coffin on not feeling, um, not feeling adequate. Sometimes it's about me not feeling adequate. It's officially 4.30, and I'm done. I'm finishing up. Um, sometimes I feel guilty. You know, people always talk about, like, grinding, and if you want to be a successful business, you got to work weekends and work on these odd hours. The truth is, I think I'm actually just efficient. Um, my ADHD allows me a little bit in a superpower way that I get anxious when work comes in. So anything that comes to my table, I finish. I literally just knock it out. Um, even right now, I was scooping and eating while I was on the phone with my mom, um, who's my real estate partner. Uh, meanwhile, writing an email to three different lenders uh, and so I just banged that all out in the same time. So it was like 40 minutes of eating and stuff, but I made it work. Got a business meeting with my mom, banged out three uh, lending emails, et cetera, et cetera, and just banged those out. Um, I will talk to some manufacturers as I go to bed. Um, we got more samples and trying to raise the quality. And also have backup sources, so you can run them against each other in terms of pricing, right? Like anything you do, you get two car dealers with the same car. You say, hey, so-and-so is giving it to me for 5K. You know, what can you do? Uh, and then two, to just streamline things, I always have a backup and different options on the creation of our garments. So that's a day in the life and a lot of ranting. I know it's a lot of yapping on this one, but I want to catch you guys up on, I guess, the motives why I'm, I'm vlogging again. Um, the counterculture to go against all this fake, in your face, what's up, Jake Paul type shit. Shout out to Jake Paul. I actually think he's a cool dude. Um, I watched a documentary on him and it made me like him a little bit. But you get what I'm saying. Uh, I think that era is going to be over in the next five years and back to where we started where we're just sharing ourselves we're normal folks and then on top of that i think i'm going to be the first one where you guys will watch the come up i think most people show the top and maybe they'll show steps when they're at the bottom but they don't show the bottom and i'm not the bottom you know i'm, I'm very blessed but in terms of business and where i've been in the now 14, 15 years I've put into the industry, I do consider a bottom. Um, and I take full accountability, right? If I did things perfectly, I wouldn't be here. It's all me. It's my decisions. But this is where I am. I might get some slack. I might get some hate. I might get laughed at for working 15 years and still not being the top dog. Um, but it's the truth. You know, I worked for some companies that were very successful, but they didn't appreciate and take care of me that way. Um, I've done a lot over the last 15 years. Um, and some of that's on me. I didn't get stuff in writing. I didn't get backed up. I didn't fight for myself. And so I made a lot of other people a lot of money. And then when it came to me, I just didn't look out for me first. Um, and now I'm trying to look out for me and my team first. And we're trying to come on the come up. So we're going to start the influencer program again for good company, the rebrand, work on my car. Try to ride this thing out, man. Appreciate you guys. Welcome to uh, Mike Farr, Silent Mike, the new journey, the new chapter, 2024.